Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're discussing what it means to be more like Jesus. Many Christians place a lot of stress on becoming more like Jesus, but what exactly does that mean? Curing illnesses? Multiplying loaves and fish? Walking on water? Fortunately, not all of the qualities that Jesus demonstrates in the Gospels are quite as hard to attain as those. Jesus also had many qualities that any person can work towards without any of that. The last time, we discussed the prudence of Jesus. Today, the feelings of Jesus. There is not much in the Gospels that specifically addresses how Jesus felt, and it's not a topic that he personally raised very often, because of his total self-control. But there were times when Jesus spoke or acted in ways that implied human emotion, so let's take a look at some of those. Then Jesus answered and said, O oh, unbelieving and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither to me. Matthew seventeen sixteen. Here, Jesus is being asked to help a boy who's disturbed, and none of his disciples were able to cure this boy. Jesus complains that the people of their generation were unholy and lacking in faith, which just goes to show that not all complaining is bad. If you're going to complain about anything, evil and lack of virtue are the things to complain about. And when he drew near, seeing the city, he wept over it, saying, If thou also hadst known and that in this thy day the things that are thy peace. But now they are hidden from thy eyes. Luke 19, 41-42 A few times throughout the Gospels, Jesus weeps in sadness over various things, and the things that he weeps over also inform us of what should make us saddest. Here, we see him weeping over the impending fate of Jerusalem, and the fact that the people of his time aren't aware of what's about to happen, or what they need to do. In short, the ignorance of sinful people is definitely something to be sad about. Jesus, therefore, when he saw her weeping, and the Jews that were come with her weeping, groaned in the spirit, and troubled himself, and said, Where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. The Jews, therefore, said, Behold, how he loved him. John eleven thirty three to 36 Jesus weeps because of the death of a beloved friend, in this case the wealthy Lazarus, who according to some traditions, helped to provide Jesus with some support during his ministry. It's very human to mourn the loss of loved ones, and there's nothing wrong with that at all. Who in the days of his flesh, with a strong cry and tears, offered up prayers and supplications to him that was able to save him from death? was heard for his reverence. Hebrews 5, 7 This verse isn't from the Gospels themselves, but it describes Jesus' agony in the Garden of Gethsemane before his crucifixion, and explicitly says that he wept during that time. What's less explicit is the reason for these tears. It could be that Jesus wept because he knew what was about to happen, and was sad about the suffering he was about to endure. It could be that he was weeping for all the people who would refuse to repent in spite of his sacrifice for their sake. It could be his tears came from a longing to complete his task and have the work of redemption done, or some combination of all of them, and more besides. In any case, hard, painful tasks that involve much suffering and sacrifice are also something that's very much worth being sad over. However, while Jesus did weep, there were also things that made him happy. But yet rejoice not in this, that spirits are subject unto you, but rejoice in this, that your names are written in heaven. In that same hour he rejoiced in the Holy Ghost, and said, I confess to thee, O Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because thou hast hidden these things from the wise and prudent, and hast revealed them to little ones. Yea, Father, for so it hath seemed good in thy sight. Luke ten twenty to 21 Jesus rejoices because the more numerous little ones, the weak and uneducated, can reach heaven, while people who seem wise and careful often miss the important things. If you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. As I also have kept my Father's commandments and do abide in his love, these things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and your joy may be filled. John fifteen ten to 11 
Jesus explains that those who obey his commandments are more reasons for him to be joyful. It's definitely best to be happy when we see other people doing what's right. So Jesus experienced the range of emotions, sadness over losses, sins, and impending trouble, joy when people do right and progress towards heaven, and frustration with sinfulness and lack of faith. Next time, some of the values of Jesus. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.